Fight for 15? Nah, that's old news. Now the fight is for 17. Senator Bernie Sanders recently introduced a bill uh, that makes the minimum wage higher. On Thursday, Sanders introduced a bill to gradually increase the federal minimum wage to $17 an hour. Sanders said the Democrats' previous uh, goal to $15 an hour was not good enough anymore. Now, the minimum wage, he says, has eroded so much that lawmakers should set their sights on higher. Quote, it is time to pass a new livable wage. As a result of inflation, 15 would be over $17 an hour today. Sanders, who chairs the Senate Committee on Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions, said minimum wage workers continue to fall behind each year as the cost of living increases, and he is correct. Look, uh, according to a recent analysis by the Economic Policy Institute, states where the federal minimum wage prevails, many of them have to be in the South, 19% of workers are earning less than $15 an hour, which, again, was never enough uh, before. It actually hasn't been enough for a very, very long time. And uh, I would actually go further than Bernie Sanders um, and have it at least 20 to 25. That's just me. Uh, but hey, 17 is the floor. Now, in 30 states that have set a higher minimum wage than the federal rate, that figure uh, drops to 13%. Um, now, there is uh, no reason that corporations cannot afford to raise wages, especially since corporate profits are up across the board. That's not an accident. CEOs have admitted on camera during shareholder meetings of using inflation as just nothing more than an excuse to increase corporate profits. That's it. So while they're making more, average people don't, and we're all paying more. Now, it's not going to pass. Uh, you know, most of Congress doesn't give a damn about workers, but it's something that people, the labor movement can rally around. Now, in addition to this, Sanders also rallied for a 32 hour work week. Uh, in fact, he also said that moving to a 32 hour work week with no loss of pay is not a radical idea, according to an op ed in The Guardian. In fact, Movement in that direction is already taking place in other developed countries. France, the seventh largest economy in the world, has a 35-hour work week and is considering reducing it to 32. The work week in Norway and Denmark is about 37. He also pointed to a recent four-day work week pilot program in the UK, where more than 90% of participating companies said the trial was so successful that there are no plans to return to a five-day work week. Sanders also noted that there is technology available uh, that helped worker productivity. And so points to that and says, look, why are we why are we working 40 hours a week? Why can't we work 32? Look, between 1979 and 2021, according to the EPI, worker productivity rose by nearly 65 percent, while hourly pay rose only just 17.3 percent. So 32 hour work rate? Hell yes. Hell yes. Uh, unfortunately, he's one of a very few politicians uh, that support this. Um, earlier this year, Representative Mark Takano reintroduced his 32 hour work week act, which is again, legislation that would cut the standard work week by amending the um, Fair Labor Standards Act. That is a 1938 law that established the 40 hour work week. There's also a couple of others uh, who co sponsored it, just two actually Representative Pramila Jayapal uh, and Representative Jan Schakowsky. No Republicans and pretty much no uh, other Democrats support this. So, yeah, none of these are going to pass. But again, that's not the point. Uh, the point is to put out bills uh, and better ideas in order to give working people a goal. It's a way of doing leadership with the intention of having other people rally around these ideas. Ideas that will, of course, help the working class. Look, labor rights are the only way forward. And so if there is a 
common goal to work towards, then labor leaders and uh, labor unions um, can get together and start working towards these goals. Because at the end of the day, the only chance we have is to organize our workplaces and fight for our rights. Nobody else can do this for us. The majority of Congress is corrupt. That's why we can't have these things that are incredibly popular. But if we can apply pressure to companies through labor action, and that includes strikes, well, that's our only bargaining chip. Fortunately for us, it's an incredibly powerful one.